talk about Adidas and Ye. We spoke about this a, a couple of weeks ago, and now more information has come out. So mm-hmm. it, it see, appears that Adidas and Ye have reached an agreement for the remaining uh, to sell the remaining inventory that they have mm-hmm. of the Yeezy brand, which is five hundred dollars, five hundred million dollars worth of product in Yeezys. Um, is this a win for Kanye, or will Adidas ultimately? Uh, be manipulated uh, for this favor. Well, what do you think? Because we were talking about this yesterday, and you made a great point. It's like, what if they stress this out for a three-year <laughs> period yeah. and say, hey, we haven't sold the $500 million worth of inventory, or if they discount it while he's under this contract? Yeah, because well, the thing about corporate is that, you know, and this is why people do like internal audits. Yeah. Because you don't really know, like forensic auditing on your books and different things of that nature, because you can make up things, right? Absolutely. And if somebody say, okay, like, we're going to pay you for, you know, a million uh, downloads on your, on your podcast. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they're the only ones that see your downloads. They have the data. <laughs> How do you know if you're getting 100 yeah. downloads or if you're getting 10 million downloads? Yeah. They're giving you reports that say, okay, you have 1.5 million downloads this month. I don't know. If that's real or not. I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So it's like... If you're saying, okay, we got $500 million worth of product, which is the equivalent to 400,000 items, right? I don't know you have 400,000 items. Who's keeping track of that? Well, where is it at? Is the warehouse in China? Is the warehouse in Wisconsin? Is the warehouse in the Philippines? Yeah. I don't know. You sell, you sell, what if you sell that in one month? (laughs) And then it's like, well, we only sold 50,000. We got more and you're just making more yeah. to sell it because it's like this is going well yeah. so yeah. let's just keep going doing this for another two years so i think it's gonna be interesting i think it is um kanye i don't think really loses in this situation i do think that he should still do something independent if he yeah, can absolutely if he can get his head together and really like focus on that but i feel like he doesn't really get hurt by this adidas they're going to have to do some explaining because they took a, so, a strong stance yes. on him and separating him and saying that they they don't condone hate speech. And they have people that they got to answer to. Yeah. <laughs> they got people that are going to be questioning, well, you just reversed this. Now you're going back. Like, So how do you explain working with somebody two months later after you just say that you can't work with them? This, this is why I say it's, all, it's only business. It's only business. There is no morals when it comes to this. It's True. Not, and that's why I hate when people try to put moral... It's not about morals. It's about if you can make money or if you can't make mm-hmm. money. And Kanye started to hurt the, the business, business too much. when he was talking too much. Because yeah. it wasn't a moral thing. Because if it was the moral thing, then you would have cut him when he said the thing about black people. Yeah. Slavery. Yeah. So that's not the reason why you did it. You did it because some of the things that he f- said started to hurt your bottom line. You should have just said that. Yeah. Because now you look like it's it's a crazy reverse when it hasn't even been six months. Mm-hmm. It's been like three months. Yeah. Like three months ago, you 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 said this is over. We can't do it. I mean <laughs> then you lose two billion dollars and you're saying, okay, this is her. Let's think about yeah. this. Yeah, you start looking at forward projections and you're saying to yourself, wait, we lost two billion, but like we still had him part of our calendar fiscal year for half the year. Yep. What is it gonna look like when we don't have him for an you're entire fiscal nine year? billion <laughs> right? in two or three years? And yeah. So you, I think from from Kanye's standpoint, it's interesting because he has so much leverage. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to do it, but from a monetary standpoint, it makes sense if he needs the money to do it. Yeah, because it's the first time we had this conversation earlier. Was like for so long, especially in our community and hip hop culture, we couldn't quantify the impact. Impact, yeah, yeah. It's tough to quantify it, right? Like we'll tell you, like, hey, yeah, we're, we're this much of the consumer, but the people are buying it because they're seeing us wear it, and so that you got to take that into account. And when you look at the bottom line, it's like, ah, yeah, whatever. But like Kanye was the first time you were like, all right, you can see the cultural impact Mm -hmm. and the financial impact come together. And then when the financial impact was taken away, look at the bottom line of your company. Yeah. And I think it was. And look at the bottom line for the rest of the people on your company. That's since that moment. That's true. While in a recession, while inflation is there, spending is tighter. I think the Adidas executives made a huge mistake that a lot of big corporations make. They don't talk to the audience. And don't know what the audience really wants. So, like, when you took Yeezy away from it, the shoes were really worth, like, 30 bucks. Like, no one wanted to wear them. It was like wearing, uh, like, Payless Nikes with the big swoosh on the side, right? Like, oh, no, without the Yeezy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Without him being attached to it. So, when you have that kind of mistake and don't have an athlete in place or any succession plan, yeah. 
That's a huge mistake. I thought they they probably thought they can push him away <laughs> and capitalize on the inventory and it backfired. And the same way what we saw going back to Apple when they put Steve Jobs out and Scully ran Apple and it was like, well, if we have a few good ideas, the business will run well. But sometimes you have a person that's so important, so important. to the brand ethos that you can't detach them away. But also it, like it goes down to, it's like Michael Jordan leaving Nike. Yeah. Right? Like at a certain point, it's danger when one person has so much influence over a company. That's not a good business it? model. It, yeah. it, well, it depends on how you structure the deal. No matter what. No matter how you structure the deal. Because God forbid, somebody can die. Somebody can get sick. Some, like, you never want to have, like, there's nobody that, even in, CEO included, yeah. disappears from Google and, and it's, it's over. Disappears from Apple and it's over. Like, yeah. Steve Jobs died and Apple's still running. Yeah. Right? It's like... It's, that's a dangerous business model when you have a star player approach to things. Mm -hmm. Even worse is having no star. Not, well, not necessarily because it's a slow grind, right? Like, I would rather take this, the no star approach and slow grind it out as long as I'm profitable and as long as I'm making yeah. money because here's what happens with star players. You learn this from sports mm -hmm. and you learn this from music. Record labels and sports are very similar. When a, a player goes through the, the ranks, right, they're extremely humble and they're willing to learn. Yeah. And they're a team player. At some point, they start to excel more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And they go from being a team player and being a role player to being a star player. Mm -hmm. When you become a star player, you're treated as a star player. Mm -hmm. Then you start to realize that you're a star player. Yeah. Then at some point in time, you, your actions start to change. Mm -hmm. So now you have to deal with that star player differently. The coach can't scream at LeBron. LeBron can yeah, miss... he doesn't bring the value that LeBron does. But listen, but yeah. LeBron can miss all-star practice. LeBron don't have to go... Like, these are things that you're afforded... Michael Jordan can scream at a referee, right? Tyrone Lue couldn't. Yeah. So the problem with that is that it's extremely difficult to deal with personalities like that. That's true, yeah. You don't realize that until you have to deal with the personality. Yeah. Most people, could. you can't have sympathy for somebody until you're in their shoes. Yeah. If you're not a coach, if you're not running a record label, if you're not the CEO of a company that has to deal with the nonsense, mm -hmm. it's difficult to understand it. It was very difficult for Krause, too. And then when he broke that team up, what has Jerry Krause done? No, but I'm rest, just saying. Rest in peace. It's, 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 he got rest his and it's not I'm to, from and the Midwest. But it's not, to say that, yeah. it's not to say that star players aren't needed. Because, of course, they, they're, they're beneficial. Yeah. But at some point in time, the headache becomes more than the talent. The headache yeah. becomes more can, than the talent. Can I give you an example where the inverse happened? Yes. Tom Brady and Belichick. But I, and I'll go, this is me, Ian Dunlap, Red Panda Rebellion. Belichick was overrated as a coach. But coach. At what, at, what, at what point? We saw when Thomas left. Oh, the fact that he hasn't won since Thomas left. And has had no impact. If we want to talk about cultural impact, boy. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Coaches, most of the time, outlive players. Mm -hmm. But owners outlive all of them. Absolutely. That's so, a great bar. I said it again. Coaches yeah. outlive players. Owners outlive everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Patriots have never been the same since Tom Brady left. Here's also the thing. Nobody is bigger than the system. The Patriots still make billions of dollars every single year. So who lost? Robert Kraft is always, that's the purpose of being an owner. Equity over everything. So who yeah, lost? Equity, yeah. So who Bill lost? Bill But that's... No, nah, he really no, didn't. No. He's still coaching. He's still going to be out of there soon. He's still coaching. He's going to be out of there soon. That's why I think he's going to be out of there soon. And that's the thing, nobody's the bigger thing. than the program. That's why to run it back to the Kanye thing. Like he has, he's, uh, he's in a position where he can have the leverage, right? Yeah. So now if he even wanted to create something or have equity... It's like, yo, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to do this deal. I'm gonna watch y'all keep bleeding because yeah. there is no say. Like, how do I know when you sell 500 million? You gonna stop yeah. saying it? Then I gonna open the book. You gonna stop sales and say like, well, yeah. well, we we reached our, our mark and thank yeah. you for the partnership and go on each way. There is no way to know, yeah. right? They're probably holding it like, yo, we are gonna sell. At least. They're probably projecting like we're gonna do two billion in sales easily. And we, he can't go back to Nike because yeah, and it's not like we're gonna be like, yo, hey, we're gonna yeah. open the books and show you. Yeah, we're just gonna agree to these terms and then we'll figure this thing out. There is no way. But he has leverage now. If he says, yo, I don't want to agree to this. You know why You know why he doesn't have leverage? In this scenario? Okay. Because he doesn't have money. That's what I said. Can't go, if, to, can't go to war unless your money's right. That's what I said. Absolutely. That's what I said. Absolutely. That's what I, said. If, I said that. I said if he needs it from a monetary standpoint. Standpoint, yeah. Right? Now, he may say, like, I'm comfortable living in my backpack with 40 million. Right? 
he might be comfortable doing that. Or he might say, like, yo, my ego knows that I'm I'm worth 10 billion. Yeah. And if I order me to get back there, I gotta get this capital to build what I really want. And that might be a, something he could do too, right? But it's just about yeah. where you where you're at with it. Cause he might be like, remember for like two months, he was just, I'm living out of my book bag. And you randomly see him at the Edition Hotel in LA and he's in the lobby. And then, but I think he knew the downfall was coming in. He felt it. Yeah, yeah. But is he comfortable yeah. in this space now? I don't know. That, that's a hard fall. No. We're gonna be real, no. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't no. know. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's a different type of dude. I don't know. Yeah. Good lesson. If you have something good, don't ruin it. Whether that's the executive, star player, coach. Or read your paperwork. True, because we don't even First. know we don't know what the percentage of the say they say of five hundred million, he's not gonna get a hundred million dollars out of this deal. No, he's not. And but once again, nobody's bigger than the program. Never. Understand when you understand that, you'll go far in life. Yeah. When you don't understand that, you'll have trouble. It's, it's, Adi- it's the same. If that's true, Adidas wouldn't wouldn't have got went back to reconcile what they did wrong to get them. They would have been able to run the program without them. That's short no. term. That's short term, right? Long term, Adidas is going to exist twenty years prior after this. Well, we'll see, right? But the thing is, uh, like, yeah, it, I'm it, like, it's, it's, it's the same game plan, right? Nike knows at some point Jordan is going to stop playing basketball. So what they do? They create Team Jordan. Yeah. Right, that wasn't successful. Nobody even nobody even thinks about that when Eddie Jones and Ray Allen yeah. were doing Jumpman. Nobody yeah. wears Jumpman. Yeah, they needed to bring back the retros of the guy who made the money. But while they're doing that, they're looking for the next talent. Oh, there's this guy from L.A. Oh, we got to get him. Oh, this is this kid from Akron. Yeah. We Better definitely have to get him. And they also Nike also used Kanye and Don C and their cultural influence for no equity to make the retros pop. This is also true. I remember when Don C was the first one. Don C and Kanye killing were, retros, they like those retros back. That's a fact. Negotiate from the very beginning so you don't get screwed over. Because there's no loyalty in business, only what the paperwork says. There you have it. My graduates from my school being Forbes backdrop, backdrop, <laughs> <laughs> a mic drop, backdrop, backdrop. <laughs>